Hi there, and welcome to BusterNet. On today's show, we're going to talk about how you can break down defensive sides. Um, we're going to deal with a style um, I like to call brute force. Um, I think people are already using that term for FM19. Essentially, it's, it seeks to break down sides simply by you throwing more players into attack. So um, the brute force style of uh, breaking down a defensive side requires a certain kind of team. And um, if you are that kind of team, then this is the video for you because it will involve you using things like counter press and maybe overlaps, depending on your, depending on your tactic. Now, here we have a 4 2 three, one. This is a very basic 4 2 three, one that you might find lots of people using. It could also be a half-decent tactic because uh, you probably are going to get a fair few goals from this. However, if you end up playing against a very defensive side, this tactic could start suffering because uh, most of your players are probably uh, going to end up being marked out of the game. So I've got a short little clip here that shows how I took this 4 2 3 one, switched it around, and ch changed some roles and duties for us to get goals against a team that was being very defensive. Here we have a good example of a 4 3 3 one that was playing against a very defensive 4 5 one. Our formation was a typical one we used all season, but in this match we found that against defensive sides, we just gave them too much time to get back in defense. If you observe carefully, each time we moved the ball around, they closed down the passing lanes, uh, either forcing us wide or we end up in situations where our players get closed down. Essentially, we're going to get more runners from midfield and we were going to force the defenders to make a choice. With so many players attacking the box, I was certain that with the right instructions, we could finally get players free to make dangerous passes. Now, what I needed to do was change some of the roles. Deep lying forward, dropping down, making space for others. We have a Mazala now running through the channels, forcing the defenders to make a decision. At the back, we have an inverted wing back on attack, supporting the Mazala's runs and inside forward on the right flank and a full back on attack on the right as well. Now, with so many players attacking the middle, all I needed to do was to think about how I would take advantage of the space down the right. All I needed to do was to set my fullback on attack onto an overlap. This would increase his mentality and his positioning, uh, put it, pushing him further up the pitch. The final tactic would create a dilemma for the AI. We had an inside forward attack driving through the middle. We had an AP on support who had three options, an inverted wing back on attack, a Mazala on attack, and an attacking midfielder on attack. All of them working off a deep line forward on support, making space for them. All I needed to do now was to make sure that the right players had direct passing so we wouldn't waste too much time with the ball. Here we use the style I like to call brute force attacking, where essentially you use a combination of counter pressing so that you win the second ball. You make sure that you, you're dominating possession. Uh, all you need to do is move an opposition around so that you can create goal scoring opportunities for yourself. Can this be done with every team? Not necessarily. You have to make absolutely sure that you are always winning the transitions, that you are controlling midfield before you want to consider a brute force attack. This is brute forcing your way through. So essentially what you're doing is you are basically getting more, more attackers uh, flooding, mid, flooding the attacking midfield to give the opposition more targets to worry about. This frees up players to, to bomb down the flanks. So here we have a fullback on attack who's been told to overlap, go down the flanks and come in, arrive unmarked. With all these players creating movement in the final third, this can brute force its way to a, through some systems. Naturally, you need to be looking uh, at certain things for this to work properly. First up, you should actually be dominating midfield even before you consider something like this. So if you wanted to start a game playing like this, this is extremely aggressive. Um, and if you can't win the ball, uh, the second ball, then definitely you shouldn't be looking at a system like this. So is, what you're looking for is um, when you're going into a game, something like 70% six, six, possession, you're controlling midfield, they're hardly coming into your half, then it makes sense for you to throw more bodies into attack. But if you're in, if you're in a game where... <laughs> they are also attacking you and you are basically not a side as good as the top six in England, then brute forcing your way through could actually result in you losing. Why? Because you're using something called counter press. Now, counter press is actually an instruction that should not be used by a lot of teams. 
unless they have the players for it. Now, if your players are the sort that win the ball back and then fail to do something with the attack, instead lose the ball and then you are you find yourself hopelessly defending, then counter-pressing isn't for you. What then you would do is you would change it to regroup. Regroup, on the other hand, the moment you lose the ball, you ask, you're asking your players to drop back into defense to try and defend uh, the spaces so that the players can't get through. For weaker sides, I typically suggest that if you wanted to brute force your way through, there are two ways you can do this. First up, with weaker sides, generally, um, I would look at trying to create space in the final third first. Then I would not brute force my way with so many attacking duties. I would probably use more conservative roles in midfield first. And then use something like this uh, to create more space. Uh, here again, we would not be using... Um, we would, we would not be using an attack duty so early. We'd probably use something like this uh, and we, we set up regroup. Instead, with a weaker team, because you might not have the players to, to do this, we we'll drop the line of engagement. Or, and the higher defensive line is based on what your players can do. Because in a lot of games, um, you, your choice of what defensive line you're going to play is going to be entirely up to your defenders because if your defenders have good anticipation, acceleration, positioning, you can afford to play with a higher defensive line. When do you know your defensive line is too high? When you see the ball coming over the top and you see your defenders running facing goal, chances say your defensive line is too high. If you see your players stepping up to the ball, you can afford to raise your defensive line. Just a turn to get to the ball is usually the best setting for your defensive line. So. Here, we have dropped our line of engagement with a high defensive line for a weaker side and we've gone for regroup. What this does instead of counter-pressing counter is the moment we lose the ball, we get our boys back and then we create space. This space will be attacked by several players. It will be attacked by the AM on attack who can also be played as a shadow striker. The shadow striker will, will attack the space. The DLFS will drop in, drop deep and we've got a fullback on overlapping on the right flank giving us a width in the attack. With good sides, brute forcing is all about keeping the ball, using the ball and denying the opposition the, a chance to have the ball. So you typically tend to play with a higher line of engagement. In order for you to play brute force football, you essentially are not giving the opposition time and space on the ball. So with a tactic like a 4-1-2-3, I probably would overlap both sides of the pitch so that my Wing backs are so high up the pitch, their wingers don't have time on the ball. The wingers are immediately forced into defending because our players are high up the pitch. This style of play uh, requires your team to be really good. You, you, you're probably a top six team. It's not easy to pull off. Um, you need to make sure that your boys can win the second ball. You need to make sure that counter pressing actually works for your team because if you if you can't pull off a counter press, you should know because. Uh, a counter press is essentially this. When you're attacking, you lose the ball, your players win the ball back and go on to score a goal. But if you win the ball back and lose the ball immediately, you can't counter press. It's, in other words, what you're doing is you're giving the opposition a really good counter attacking opportunity. So counter pressing is not going to be for you. It's going to be very risky. Here, you might want to choose a more conservative approach, which is not to use the counter press, instead use a regroup. Now, you can watch my movement into channels video where I, on the fourth one, where I explain how regroup actually works. So here in this particular case, um, in this particular example, we're using a 4-1-2-3. In this 4-1-2-3, I've got very attacking wing banks. I've got inside forwards that want to attack the spaces. I got a poacher, I can change this to a DLF. A DLF is probably a much better idea or a DLF on attack. This deep line forward will drop deep. Mazala will attack the box. Inside forward will attack the box. This way, wing back is going to drop down the flanks. And what do we have? We have a very aggressive tactic with runners from midfield. And uh, we are using a higher line of engagement or a much higher line of engagement to press the opposition. We are using overlaps to deny their wingers or any flank players time on the ball because all they are doing is defending against our very good wing backs. This kind of a strategy is brute forcing your way. Now, if you're going to brute force your way, you need the players to do it. If you don't have the players to do it, you will know because you can't counter press. When you can't counter press, the signs are very simple. The moment you attack, you try to win the ball back, you get the ball back, but your boys can't do anything with the ball, they lose the ball and the opponent hits one over the top, I guarantee you counter pressing is not for you. 
So what you need to do is come up with a different strategy. And this strategy is not brute, it's a, it's a form of brute forcing, but here what you're doing is you're not using counter press, using regroup. Regroup is gonna be different. Regroup tells your team to drop into position once they lose the ball and hold their position. So here in this tactic, it allows me to do that as well. My anchor man is not going to drift too far away. He's going to always protect, pro provide protection for these two players. And uh, all I need to do then is to change my roles to fullbacks on support and maybe one wing back and up then maybe only to overlap down one flank. Turn this play into an inside forward attack or inside forward and support. Generally, I'll leave him as an inside forward and attack and get leave this guy as a fullback on support with a... Uh, this guy could be a wing back on attack or a full back on attack. This guy bombs down the flank because we're using an anchor man. I'm more confident of using a Mazala. So here uh, we're using regroup. And then your line of engagement in your defensive line. Every time you use a deep, deep defensive midfielder, you can afford to play with standard and higher lines of engagement. If you don't use one, then you've got to think about the space between your midfield and your defense. That's where adjusting your line of engagement becomes important. The line of engagement simply is about where you close down the opponent, but it also keeps your midfield in check because your midfield is going to be closer to your defense on lower lines of engagement so that they make it harder for opponents to find spaces between the horizontal tiers. So the next time you want to play with a brute force attack, you want to ask yourself, how do I get more players from midfield into the opponent's third? In order for you to brute force successfully with a good team, you need to be able to counter press. If you can't counter press, you do not brute force. You regroup instead. When you regroup, chances are you're going to be using fewer attack duties because here you're looking at counter attacking. So when you regroup, you're using the line of engagement and you're drawing a team out and then you're using more attacking duties to get behind them. So you're looking at acceleration and pace for some of these players to get behind the attack. And we're looking for quick transitions in midfield for us to use the Mazala to drive in through the middle so that they occupy the central defenders. So with a weaker side, regroup can be a very good strategy to break down defensive sides. So you're using regroup and then you're using the line of engagement to draw teams out. And then you're using your roles and duties to attack the spaces left behind here. Do you use work ball into box or do you use hit early crosses? With regroup, I tend to use hit early crosses because then uh, we, we dropped in and we're looking at counter attack. So I want to hit the early crosses for attacking duties to latch onto and pass into space if we have space to exploit. So the next time you want to use a strategy and you want to break down a defensive side, you've got to ask yourself, what kind of a team do I have first? If you can honestly say that you can counter press successfully you will always know this because uh, in your games you're typically having uh, really good amounts of possession in midfield i'm not and i'm not talking about 51 or 40 percent uh having like 51 and 49 that that tells me you can't counter press you're talking about camping in an opponent's half we, how, do, how do you tell? Look at the action zones. If you see that the AI is hardly ever in your half, chances are you can counter press. If you see that the AI is in your half as much as you're in their half, then please don't counter press. And counter press could be disastrous for you. So I hope uh, you enjoyed this short little guide on how to break down defensive sites using brute forcing. Uh, if you have any questions, please look me up on Twitter at Bustanet or addicted to fm.com. My website, once again, I want to thank all my patrons for their continued support this channel. You make this kind of shows possible for us as a community. You guys take care. Have a good one. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.